There's concern worldwide right now over how to deal with thousands of Syrian refugees fleeing their war-torn homeland. After the Paris attacks, there's fear terrorists will use the refugee crisis to slip into Europe and the United States and commit more violence. As the political debate rages, one Western Massachusetts woman is committed to helping Syrian refugees who are now in Jordan. Connecting Point correspondent Carolee McGrath spoke with Gina Penzieri, owner of Small Business Solutions in Belchertown, about Atlantic Humanitarian Relief. That's the nonprofit she started to bring help to these people now without a country. Our primary work is medical. Uh, we consider ourselves a medical and humanitarian nonprofit. Um, we um, source medications, vitamins, and uh, volunteer doctors come with us into the areas where Syrian refugees are in northern Jordan. And we set up mobile clinics and mobile pharmacies and, you know, they take care of the kids, prescribe medication, same with adults. So our primary work is medical. Um, we also, you know, personally my agenda is children. A lot of these kids haven't been in school for four years. Um, the, you know, that's changing a bit. The Jordanian government, especially in the larger cities like Amman, have instituted a, a two-term two day where Jordanians go in the morning and Syrians go in the afternoon. But that's not throughout Jordan. There's still a lot of kids that um, don't have an education. So we bring in educational packs. We make them up. We bring them in. We bring in basic hygiene kits, um, all anything that can help someone who has nothing. Um, so again, it's a twofold. Our primary is medi uh, medical. Secondary is humanitarian. And not all of the people who are in Jordan are in refugee camps. A minority of refugees in Jordan are in camps. There's something like 1.2 million Syrian refugees in Jordan, and of those, probably 150,000 are in camps. And they can't work. And they can't work. So they're in an, an impossible spot, really. Impossible. You know, they're reliant on the UN High Commissioner for Refugees for money for food and rent. And of course, now, you know, there's a you know, insufficient supply of housing. You know, what do you do when 1.2 million people come in your country in two years? Right. You know, I think the, the picture, and we were talking about this uh, before we got on camera, of that little boy, that three-year-old who washed up on the beach uh, with his family trying to escape. It, it hit home for me yes. as a mother. Yes. I have a three-year-old, and I'm sure for other people as well. Absolutely. I think that changed sort of the um, attention, perhaps, mm -hmm. of the whole crisis. You're a mom. You're a grandmother. It had to have hit you. Very heartbreaking. Uh, you know, some of the stories I could tell you of the kids in Jordan are, you know, it's unconscionable. There's one mom who's stunningly amazing. Her husband had been uh, in the Free Syrian Army, and one way Assad was trying to find uh, Free Syrian Army members was to go after the family. So they imprisoned her three children. Uh, tortured two of them and gave the infant six months old heroin in his formula. So, and she she went to the media, Al Jazeera, and another station, and you know they helped her get her kids out of prison. And she had just come into Jordan. So, you know, the stories. There are so many stories. It's overwhelming, heartbreaking. And you look at that story and you say, well, in one way. She's lucky. She got her kids back, and they're they're alive. But there are so many people, and lucky is a terrible word to say right. for somebody who's who's been through such an atrocity exactly. like that. Exactly. But she considered herself lucky, and she was grateful that she found us and others because what she was coming to us for was, you know, psychosocial help for her kids who had been tortured. And yeah, tortured. they burned with cigarette burns, and it was terrible. What can people do in Western Massachusetts to help? Because I'm sure most people watching would say, what can I do from here? I mean, There's so many things, actually. Um, money. You know, you have an extra $10, that's going to help us make five educational packs. Um, if you don't have money, donate. Donate whatever you have that's extra. Winter clothing right now is the big thing. Sleeping bags. Um, hats and mittens for kids, boots for kids. Um, we will, if people in this area want to donate items, 
if we can't bring them into Jordan, we will make sure they get into Syria. We have some sister nonprofits who uh, have probably every three weeks uh, container going into Syria, northern Syria through Turkey. So we can get items to people in need. Okay, Gina, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us your website one more time so that people can find you. AtlanticHumanitarianRelief.org. Thank you so much for thank joining you us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for your work. Thank you.